Live from San Diego, California, it's theCUBE. Covering KubeCon and CloudNativeCon. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and its ecosystem partner. Welcome back. This is theCUBE's coverage, fourth year of KubeCon, CloudNativeCon 2019 here in San Diego. I am Stu Miniman. My co-host for this afternoon is Justin Warren, and happy to welcome to the program a first-time guest, but was on the keynote stage yesterday, Sugu Sugamarine, who's the co-founder and CTO of Planet Scale, and uh, also one of the, uh, we're going to be talking about Vitesse, uh, which graduated, uh, announced on the stage. Uh, they didn't uh, put cap and gown or uh, roll everything out, which they did a couple of years ago, but first of all, thanks so much for joining us and congratulations. Thank you. All right, so Sugu, bring us back. Uh, we, you know, we're, we're talking about a cloud native database and we'll, we'll dig into that and everything, but bring us back to what you were working on and uh, you know, the, the why of uh, what we now call Vitesse. So the, uh, when we started with us, we were really not thinking of cloud native itself per se. Uh, it was kind of a sequence of events that kind of forced Vitesse to become cloud native long before cloud native was actually born, even the term was born, which was when we had to move Vitesse from uh, YouTube's on-prem into Google's uh, Borg, uh, which the, is the predecessor of uh, Kubernetes. Um, the reason why Vitesse is kind of one of the leading storage projects in cloud native was because it was probably the first project that was remained open source even though we managed to run it within Borg. Yeah, you know, what, what, one of the things we, we've been talking about at the show here is, you know, in the early days, you know, we were very much talking about infrastructure, but we know the reason we have infrastructure is to run applications, and come on, one of the most important, you know, applications is databases, and when I talk to customers, it's not just one database, often they have many different databases, um, and that is one of the big challenges uh, today, so, you know, you kind of look at that landscape, help us understand how, how this fits into uh, that, that overall picture. Yeah, so that's, um that kind of goes back into uh, Google's history and how that uh, kind of influenced Kubernetes itself. So if you look at Google's Borg, uh, most of its uh, features are meant for running stateless applications. So within Google, people uh, who wrote uh, applications, when they wanted to store state, they just called out into a service that was semi part of Borg, but wasn't itself run by Borg as as if you would run your application. So many of those properties were inherited by Kubernetes. So which was the reason why uh, right from the beginning it was hard to make storage work for Kubernetes. Yeah. And um, uh, for that reason, even uh, as recently as early this year, if you look at uh, tweets from Kelsey, uh, Hightower, it says, don't just move your database into Kubernetes, you're going to regret it. You know? yeah. The people still say that, but at the same time, because Vitesse, we were able to figure out how to make storage work under the stringent rules that uh, Borg had, which was mainly to support stateless application. In other words, we actually ran Vitesse as if it was a stateless application, while still managing, while still making uh, state, statefulness survive this stateless behavior, which is actually why um, Vitesse managed to uh, be launched within Kubernetes as soon as it was born. Uh, but it has been a struggle for uh, other people because they didn't have the luxury of preparing for it without even knowing. Uh, so I think that more effort needs to be made on both sides, both from people who are writing storage to make them work with Kubernetes, as well as Kubernetes itself trying to meet them halfway, you know, trying to add features to help the storage uh, developers. Yeah, it has been a real struggle. I remember from even the very first show I, I came to uh, four years ago in Seattle, uh, looking at the set. My immediate thing as an ex-storage guy and as, a, and as a backup guy was to go and look at things and say, okay, so this is lovely for stateless applications, as you said, but real applications have data in them and they, ha they need to maintain state. And I said, so show, where's the state? Looking at all of the Kubernetes side of things, it's like there were no, stateful sets was not a thing. That has changed a lot in four years and people have come to the party and said, we need to be able to manage state. But now that you, we have a database like Vitesse, 
isn't that just taking things to, to the point where I, as an app developer, I can just write my stateless application and then my data can live inside a data management service like Vitesse, so I don't actually need to deal with any of that state management problem myself? That's what it amounts to. Uh, the, the one property of Vitesse is that it can run both in Kubernetes and outside. So there are people who run Vitesse on-prem. Right. And they have their own orchestration layer. So that has given some challenge where uh, Vitesse cannot depend on Kubernetes. It cannot call into a Kubernetes API. Uh, so the way we have architected Vitesse is that uh, it knows when it runs within a uh, orchestrated environment how to interact with it. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it doesn't assume that it exists. Right. So well, Why have you provided that functionality? Is that because customers said that I actually want to be able to run Vitesse but I don't want to have to deal with Kubernetes? Exactly right. So right. not everyone has migrated to Kubernetes. It is surprising that everybody wants to migrate to Kubernetes, but then many of them are saying, I don't know how many years out it is. Yeah. And then for them, Vitesse solves a different problem, which is the problem of sheer massive scalability. Hmm. Uh, and uh, for them, they want to be able to still run Vitesse on-prem. Uh, so for that reason, there is actually a small gap between Kubernetes and Vitesse itself. And uh, we are filling that gap with uh, Helm charts in the open source. And uh, PlanetScale, which is the company that I founded, uh, has built an operator that we are also going to open source so that people can uh, use that to launch Kubernetes, okay. uh, uh, Vitesse. Be before we talk about PlanetScale, uh, you know, no, 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 uh, absolutely. In the keynote, you, you had some customer stories uh, and might, might help illustrate some of what we're talking about, you know, the, 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 you know, the scalability uh, of the environment and everything. So, you know, I'll, I'll let you choose a kind of a short example. Uh, you know, the Slack one, uh, you know, is one that uh, I, I think resonated Definitely. with the audience there, but yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I would choose uh, Slack. Uh, JD is already obviously enormous, but I will choose Slack and Nozzle because they represent uh, two very different uh, but real genuine needs in the industry. Uh, Slack uh, wants uh, not just massive scale, but they want flexibility with manipulating data, and uh, that is something that is, manipulating data is really, really hard. And uh, we believe that we found the secret sauce to make that work with Vitesse. And that is the reason uh, you saw those statements from Slack, they are so passionate and with so much conviction. Yeah. That is because uh, they were fascinated by what Vitesse could do with their data. So that is one example. And Slack does not run on Kubernetes. They don't run on cloud. They run on uh, AWS, but they don't, uh, they run it like they, they are on-prem. Uh, they have very fixed IP addresses, fixed instance names. Uh, but they run it like a cloud. Uh, sometimes I would say they are more cloud-native behavior than some applications that run on Kubernetes. Like they treat everything as disposable. When something goes away, they don't try to recover it or anything. Just throw it out, replace it with something new, which is a property of cloud-native behavior. Yeah. Uh, and on the other hand, a company like Nozzle, because they are, uh, they are actually a startup, uh, and uh, it is surprising that why would a startup want to use uh, something that is meant to scale massively, right? That's when we realize that the cloud native nature of Vitesse uh, fills a gap that currently is not filled by many people, which is, I want to run everything in Kubernetes, all in one, and uh, we didn't realize until they showed us what they did with it, which is like completely migrate from one cloud to another. You know? That was super amazing when I heard that. And they did that without even telling me or telling anybody in the community because one day I talked to them, they say they are on AKS. And few days later, I still assume that they are on AKS and say, no, we have moved to GKE. Say, when did you do this? You know? yeah. <laughs> say, oh, we did that last month because we got some really good deal with them. <laughs> It was super exciting. And that, yeah. that is a surprising example. I mean, the fact that that's surprising is, is a bit of a concern to me because we hear a lot of talk about multi-cloud and, and the idea of applications being, being mobile between different clouds is like, data movement is really hard. Exactly. So the fact that someone has actually managed to do that and have it move from one Kubernetes service across to another one is like, we find that remarkable because we know it's such a hard problem. 
but that's one of the great things I think about Kubernetes, which is possibly underappreciated, is that it's, it's not that it makes everything easy, but it makes what, what used to be hard is now possible. Yes, 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 that is very true, yeah. It's, um, uh, like it took, it took us a while to, uh, uh, to think, to make this mind shift, because it, some of these things, even though they are like, it, it looks, looks, looks very obvious, mm. right? But for the longest time, we were, uh, we were saying Vitas is for massive scalability, it's for, it's for this and that, and uh, even uh, two years ago, HubSpot came and said, we are going to use Vitas for Kubernetes orchestration. We're like, Weird, yeah. but okay. <laughs> uh, feel free. You know, we don't have a problem with it. Yeah. And then uh, nozzle came out, and now suddenly you see, oh, this is this is why, and uh, this solves a really really difficult problem. Uh, and they all did, uh, especially uh, HubSpot, did a lot of work in Vitess to actually make it easier. Uh, but now we see, uh, now we see the light. You know? All right. <laughs> yeah. So so Sugu, uh, Planet Scale is the company. Uh, to, uh, help us understand uh, Vitesse, uh, Planet Scale, how that fits together. What's kind of the business model for for your your company? Yeah. So um, uh, so Vitesse was originally developed at YouTube uh, by YouTube. Uh, there was one thing that was uh, some pressure we were beginning to feel. We uh, when we developed it, we didn't mean for anybody to use it really. It was open source more for academic reasons to show that we can do these things, you know? Uh, and uh, it was interesting when people started adopting it. So you're adopting this system? Oh, okay, so we'll see what we can do to help you. But after a while, when the community started growing, uh, some of them were contributing, but definitely uh, storage is a difficult software to write to. It's, it's not like a peripheral software where, any, where anybody can just understand the code and start writing. It was obvious that the number of people wanting to use Vitesse and wanting features from it are also people that were not really capable of uh, writing those features. Yeah. Uh, because they are really hard features to write. And uh, that pressure was growing and they were saying, oh, I wish YouTube could do this for me. Said, you know, YouTube is a video company. They are not in the, we just did this for ourselves. There's no reason for us to uh, spend uh, so many person years developing this feature for you, and that time it became obvious that we need to start a company uh, to support this community where there's this huge growing demand, okay. which is kind of what motivated towards us uh, thinking about uh, starting Planet Scale. And one requirement was it cannot remain a YouTube project at that point. So, which is why we worked it out that we will actually move it to CNCF and then I ended up leaving uh, YouTube to start Planet Scale with my co-founder, Jiten. So is uh, just uh, fr from a business standpoint, is it services or there, uh, it, it, it customers ask for things and, and fund that, uh, that, get, that gets contributed upstream? So that was initially what we thought we will do. Initially we thought we'll just get our laptops and start helping people, you know? <laughs> That's, that, that was our uh, um, initial thinking. But uh, what we realized was at the same time, uh, the industry has shifted towards this new business model, which is to actually run everything as a service. And we realized, oh my God, we are, all we have to do is, we know how to run Vitess. We've done it at YouTube. We've helped people deploy Vitess in various companies. We know exactly what it takes to run Vitess. All we have to do is take this and run it as a service. And that is, that is exactly what people want because otherwise, because of the fact that Vitesse is this flexible, it is also extremely complex to configure. Because it can run on-prem, then you have to set all these flags. If you run in Kubernetes, you have to set all these flags. So all this has to be managed. And we realized, okay, we can manage this. And we know exactly how to make it work. And uh, we actually just announced uh, two days ago uh, that our uh, planet scale CNDB cloud native database is available for people to come and use. Well, yeah. Sugu, congratulations on, on the progress of the business as well as Vitesse graduation, and thank you so much for joining us here on theCUBE. Thank you. All right, for Justin Warren, I'm Stu Miniman. We will be back with more of our day two of three days wall-to-wall -wall coverage here from San Diego. Thank you for watching theCUBE.